grapes wasn't a very good year for the grapes, but I'm very blessed that I'm able to make as much grape jelly as I need, probably about two years worth. And I still have about a two years worth on the shelf. Today we're juicing these to make grape jelly using paraffin wax, a very old fashioned tradition. This is an amazing little tool that really helps me. It is a steam juicer. I'm gonna go ahead and put it together. Hi everybody and welcome back. Today we are gonna use a very old method. Now first, I need to say, this is what they would consider rebel canning. This is not USDA regulated anymore. But the reason why I am promoting this way of preserving jams and jellies and fruit syrups only. So let me just say that again. This method is only for jellies and jams and fruit syrup. The reason why I'm recommending this is because it's very high acid and this is a wonderful way that you can preserve jams and jelly with no canning whatsoever. We are using authentic, very old jars. These were from the 1940s. So this is what they look like. They have the metal lid. These are jelly jars that are made for paraffin wax. Now, I'm going to show you and talk about all of these things and I hope that you find this video full of memories of your grandma or your great grandma or your mother and I hope that you can give it a try as well. I do most of my jams and jellies using the paraffin wax method and I also do syrups. So in other words, they're only fruit syrups. This method is okay because of the high sugar content. Sugar is a preservative. And in jams and jellies, there is no, in my opinion, there is no chance of botulism because of the high sugar content. Now, with that all being said, if you want to can your jams and jellies the way that they do it these days, you can go right ahead. But this is a wonderful way to preserve food without having to have canning lids and without any canning whatsoever. To show you how we do it every year i love doing videos like this because this is what i do i've been doing this for over 35 years we have the old vintage canning books now in these vintage canning books you will see water bath methods for things like green beans and potatoes i do not recommend you do that but that is to your own discretion None of these books ever say about canning anything dairy, ever. In fact, I have really checked into that and I did a lot of research and in the back in the days of the 18, back in the days of the 1900s when canning came out, nobody ever canned dairy items. So there is that little disclaimer, but all of these books are the old books and the books that are just full of so much advice and information you have to take it with a little bit of a grain of salt like my mama would say so it's your discretion of course and this method is your discretion of course but the worst thing that would happen to your jams and jelly is they would turn into wine or you would get a little mold on the top of them now back in the olden days they would just scrape the mold off the same with with cheese and they would continue to eat it I don't recommend that. If something would get moldy, I would just dispose of it. But back in those days, things were different. But what would happen if this wouldn't seal with the paraffin wax? Well, a lot of times these kind of things can turn fermented. And that is just another word for, well, fermented grapes. We know what they are. So let's go ahead and let's just get right into the video and get making this. This isn't so much of a video on how to make jams and jellies. This is more of a video on how to preserve foods the Great Depression way and how to preserve foods. So these jelly jars were made for this. Now you can use any jelly jar. I also buy something from the UK. I cannot buy it here in America. 
and that is these jar toppers. I cannot find these anywhere in America. Amazon sells them, but it does come from the UK. And this was standard how they did things. So it's gonna be fascinating and it's gonna be so much fun. All right, so we're gonna get started. We're gonna add the five cups of juice. It's recommended that you do not double making jelly. These are from my very own grapes. Okay, so there is the five cups of juice. All right, we're gonna add one box of Sure Gel. I do use pectin in all of my jams and jellies. Now this is jelly, this doesn't have any fruit in it. But you can use the paraffin wax for jams as well. We're gonna pour this a little bit at a time to make sure it dissolves properly. Now this is cold. All right, we're gonna put this on the stove and I'm gonna boil it and then I'm gonna add my sugar and I'm gonna stir it until it's done. Then you add a little bit of butter to make sure it doesn't foam. When the jelly is finished, we will come back here and then we will show you how you put it in the jars. Now I'm gonna add the sugar. All right, everyone, we'll get back to you in just a minute and we'll do some more research here on the Great Depression and how they actually preserved a lot of food. Very interesting. But even in the Great Depression and times like that, they talked about pressure canning. So pressure canners were really quite early in our whole canning experience. Nowadays, pressure canners are extremely safe. I'm not sure, I'm trying to look to see when the date is of this book. I think this one was 1942. I am not sure, I thought so. Anyhow, they are so fascinating to look at. Okay, let's go with step number two. Now we fill it right up to the neckline. All right, you'll see a little bit of a film on a few of these. Now you can easy just skim that off if it bothers you. Really, it's just for the looks of it. We did add the butter, so it's really, it's really not that much. You won't see it once the paraffin wax is on. But if you're very fussy, you can just skim that off. It's actually really tasty. I'm leaving the rest on. Now we're gonna start with the grape jelly first because that one was poured first. Headspace doesn't really matter too much for this because we are not canning this. We're actually gonna be putting a layer of wax on top of it. So we wanna make sure we have enough of wax. The wax will stay on the top of it. You'll see in a moment. The wax will always go to the top. So you don't need to worry, the wax won't get mixed up in with the jam and jelly. The jars were washed in hot soapy water, but they are not sterilized, but they were clean. So we're gonna go ahead, now we're gonna go put the wax on. If you miss a jar, you'll notice it because as soon as the wax starts to get hard, it will turn white. So we're gonna start with this one. You will know in time how much wax to use. You'll get so used to it. 
it doesn't really need to be that much wax just enough that's going to cover the jar so we're going to fill the wax almost to the top to get the wax off it's so simple you just stick a little knife in the middle and it'll come up in the whole disc people ask me all the time can you reuse the wax you can if you wish I don't but you can reuse the wax after you clean it off now the same with canning you're going to wait 24 hours before you move your jars so you just let it sit here until the wax is hardened all right that's what it looks like until the wax is hardened all right everyone it's the very next day and i want to show you before i put everything away what it looks like so close up this is how it looks you can see there is a barrier on the top it's going to keep your jars really nice and safe and secure there's no air in there let me show you what we do next and then I can put them away. Right now we're going to take the wax paper. Now you don't need to use this, but I do. And that's gonna create another barrier. Now what a lot of people do, especially in the UK, is they will go ahead and they will soak this in bourbon. It's an alcohol instead of using the wax, but I like to do it double. So I like to have double protection. So it fits these jars really nice. It doesn't fit these very well. But we'll see if we can add that. Now we're gonna go ahead and we are going to take the cellophane and a rubber band like this. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, how about you give me a thumbs up? or share it with your family and friends. Take care, everyone, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye, everybody.